What's up internet folks, Mr. Toffee here. Are you stoked about the new Nintendo Switch console? You should be, it's coming out on March 3rd. A new Legend of Zelda game is out on that date too, and another obligatory tech demo that we probably will shelve off or maybe just bring up for a party, who knows. Okay, 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 maybe the Nintendo Switch launch may be a tad bare bones, but March onwards is looking to be an exciting time for old school and newbie gamers. This also means that Nintendo's previous console will be <coughs> switched out of the equation to make room for the new. I'm talking about the Wii U, folks. Personally, it kinda sucks that it didn't get the traction it deserves, but to be fair, Nintendo, to put it kindly, done f***ed up with the message and marketing for the Wii U a few years back in E3 2012. Carnival games, what the controller was, what the system was, hell the name itself? Should be a little bit more on the nose than, I don't know, Wii U. Why not just call it the Wii 2 or Wii sequel? Why not just use the codename Revolution instead, like what the previous Wii had back in the day. Wii Revolution, Wii R, Wir. Yeah, this is why I don't name consoles. The Wii U's problems isn't just its name and pitch. Late game launches, delays, publishers backing out at the last possible minute after seeing the low sales from the get-go. Archaic online systems, not even standing out among giants like PlayStation and Xbox within that period, it never had a chance. It is a shame that they never recovered from that slump, because there were some damn good game titles on the Wii U, at least during its mid-year and later years. Because that's what matters for consoles, right? The games. It's always the games. Again, it's hard to defend the Wii U in the state it's in. And I'm sure that many people may not miss it once the Nintendo Switch makes headway and have its library sorted out by the end of 2017. But yeah, I do not regret getting a Wii U at all. I'm sure others did, though probably a small fraction of the gaming populace, but I did not. To me, it's still a unique device with a touchpad that works pretty well despite its low battery life. The games, the portability of it all, I can fit all of this in like a fraction of my suitcase space. Universal hard drive expansion so you can just format and use your old HDD for more storage space for your games. Safe state options on your virtual console games. The gamepad itself at the sensor bar, that's pretty nifty especially if you can't find your original sensor bar tucked somewhere. I brought the Wii U down for house parties and friend gatherings within Asia the last few years. Everyone had a blast with it. If anything, Nintendo took the compactness of the Wii U and put a new spin on it for the Nintendo Switch. Playing with power is awesome and all, but playing with friends or something that's for all ages and accessible, the levels of fun from that is priceless. Now, I'm currently concerned about one thing. All those games I bought physically for the Wii U, they're not going to be playable on Nintendo Switch, aren't they? I hope so. At the Nintendo Switch presentation, there was neither any word of how Wii U games can be played on the Nintendo Switch, nor was there any specific backwards compatibility option offered. Damn thing itself doesn't even have a disk drive. I hope my fears are put to rest. I hope that just before the March launch, Nintendo will be like, BTW, your old Wii U games work on this via some magic or some online account method or whatever. And with that, I give you something to ponder on, but in the meantime, the toast to the machine that could have but didn't. And now I leave you the top list of games you must own on the Wii U in case you want to find one at a really cheap and discounted price. This is Asia we're talking about, so I'm sure you can find it on Carousel or even your mom and pop game shops. Alright, so let's take it away! Number 10, Super Smash Bros. Great brawler party game and even great tournament title that lets you use the GameCube controller. Also, I personally find it fun to make a drinking game to bet who among the 8 AI controlled little Mac players would win. It's like horse betting, but with alcohol and Nintendo. Number 9, Splatoon. So what happens when you get Nintendo to create a shooter? We get this razzmatazz combo of territory, acquiring 5v5 multiplayer action, squids, a soundtrack and art style that reminds you of Jet Set Radio in a way, and a kick-ass single player mode filled with great puzzles and levels. Oh, and a heck a ton of fish puns. Number 8, Yoshi's Woolly World. Don't let this cute aesthetics of this platformer fool you. This game gets tricky as heck in later stages. Okay, sure, this I kinda got enamored by the game because of its really really cute yarn art graphics and... Oh, it's a cuddly! Woohoo! Number 7, Donkey Kong Country. Tropical Freeze. You think you're hardcore? Well, try competing the world's 6 to 8 stages of this platforming bad boy in one shot for the first time. 
While Donkey Kong Country Returns was back in its full form on the Wii, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was like just new levels, new styles of play, and a pretty kick-ass soundtrack to boot. Courtesy of Dave Wise. Number 6, Super Mario 3D World. You can't go wrong with a flagship 3D platforming title starring Mario and his pals. Nintendo brought back the character dynamics from Super Mario Bros. 2 NES, and also added in cat suits as power-up. Number 5, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Still sore about not being able to play Persona 5 yet? Well, this JRPG from both Nintendo and Atlas will sate your thirst. Featuring pop star idol summoning spirits inspired from Fire Emblem games, ditzy girls taking stage advice from cats, and Power Ranger villains. Number 4, Xenoblade Chronicles X. More like Xenoblade Chronicles X10, you know, times 10, you know, I'm the pun there. Anyway, this game is huge, you got tons to do, and you get access to flying max cult scales that open up the exploration and combat further. The game throws you at the deep end, and you have to kind of learn things by your own, but once you figure it all out with patience and a little luck, you find a rich experience worth remembering. Wish we could do something about the choice of trashy rap in the game's soundtrack, though. Number 3, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Remember those cool level perspective tilting puzzles in Super Mario 3D World? Wouldn't it be cool if someone made a game entirely out of those awesome segments? Well, this title is your answer. Number 2, Wonderful 101. So who asked for a superhero flash mob controlling action game? All of us did, I think. But who cares, we got one and it's fucking awesome. Honestly, no one can take this concept and crank it up to an nth degree like Platinum Games and Mr. Devil May Cry himself, Hideki Kamiya. I mean, this is a team that did Okami, Vanquish, and Bayonetta. Of course this superhero game is going to kick ass. Just don't expect it to take it easy on you. And number one, Bayonetta 2. Speaking of Bayonetta, this sequel just keeps the original game's over-the-top action and heightened it up some more. You want more fights that test your skill? The Lumen Sage battles will do just that, and then some. Need better weapons? The chainsaw skates and Sky's shotgun combo will get you sorted. You want more bombastic stages? Try riding on a jet plane upside down fighting angels and also riding on a demon unicorn. In hell! In the action game circuit, Bayonetta 2 has no equal. That's it for my ode to the Wii U. What do you think about the Wii U back in the day and now? Would you still buy it as a collector's thing now that it will go for cheap? If you have something to say, just do it on the comments box below this channel, and also like and subscribe to this channel if you can. We'll be going to our regular scheduled music feature programming soon. This is Mr. Toffee, signing out.